Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Justice for All. Today we're going to be doing our first like real trial. You know, it's not the tutorial trial anymore. We've done some investigating. We don't have amnesia and we are ready to defend Maya once again. So I take that to mean she's not going to be with me in trial again, which is a little sad, but I guess that makes sense <laughs> when you're being accused of murder. Which by the way, while I'm thinking of it, speaking of Maya, I want to make a correction. In the last video, I was like, Maya's 17. She's actually 18 now. <laughs> Um, I totally forgot about the fact that this is like a year later, so she is a year older. So yeah, Pearl's little shipping. <laughs> okay, it's it's not illegal. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, I definitely think that Eeny Meeny is behind everything because of her sister. Um, we got that whole like lock system thing that we learned about last time, and <laughs> Mia seems to be hiding something, which is concerning. She's hiding like three somethings. I don't know what that would be. And also today we're gonna to be facing off against Von Karma's daughter. Ah, uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be rough. I don't know that I'm gonna like this girl anywhere near as much as I like Edgeworth, but we'll see. The fact that she was raised by Von Karma is concerning. Uh, yeah, Um, I did check. This trial is gonna be split into two parts like the first one was. So I'm assuming this video is gonna be the first half of the trial. Uh, I, honestly, it's. I don't know why it feels like it's been a while since I've recorded. I, it, it is actually another thing about it. I recorded like a day or so earlier last week than I normally did because I had something going on. And so now it's a, the evidence I feel like isn't super fresh in my head. So hopefully this goes okay. What? As a year about karma, you mean? No, I heard it's his, his successor this time. Successor? Number one karma. He's a really sinister man. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks, also he could win. I could never forget. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. He had a perfect record for 40 long years. Who knows what sort of dirty tricks he used to get out of those guilty verdicts. And his horrid screed is what ruined him in the end. And now his, ex his successor, I wonder what kind of person they'll turn out to be. I know she's got a whip. No good! Mystic Maya! Oh, Pearly! Pearly! You shut up! Things are coming all this way! Maybe Pearl will be with me in the trial. I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't you two come together? Mother is watching over the trainees. She said they have training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then, then you came all by yourself? Yep, I stuck out of the banner and followed a map. Oh. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. <laughs> oh, Pearl. That's... I can't... Oh, my. It takes two hours by train. Oh, man. Girl! <laughs> you have some strong little legs. Really? What about the train? Huh? What's a train? I give up. It's time, isn't it? Um, I'm really scared. Tries to do something to me. At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me than Mr. Von Karma. Right. There was no Mr. For, before Von Karma. I don't know why I said that. Um, Edgeworth, especially with the way he is now, if he figured out that you weren't actually guilty, like, you, you would be okay. Mr. Edgeworth? Who's that? Only the best character ever. The most handsome man you'll ever meet. Um, he's Nick's rival. Well, he's also a friend. He- <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Edgeworth moment! Edgeworth moment! I love him so much. I still remember him as- Though I'd seen him only yesterday. Every trial was a scorchingly fierce battle until the very end. Objection! Objection! And back and forth with them. Though your rivals for life. Maya. Please don't mention that name ever again. But why, Manek? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot. You don't know. He... he's... he's gone. And he's not coming back. What? Whoa, wait! Wait a second! What's that supposed to mean? We will commence shortly. Please proceed into the courtroom. Um... Do you mean, like... I mean, he left. Like, the, the, the field. We know that. But when you say he's gone, you don't happen to mean, like, he's missing, do you? Eh... Uh. 
Let's go. Now's not the time to talk about that anyway. N Nick? There she is. Art is now in session for the trial of Maya Fay. Are the prosecution and the defense prepared? Hello? What is with this kid? This is very awkward. Ahem, Mr. Wright, are you prepared? Huh? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Because we broke up. Um, hmm. Mr. Phoenix Wright! <laughs> Dude! Bear with me. I don't know if that voice is sticking. We're just rolling with something right now. You must be a little shocked because I'm a woman, correct? Hold on, so she's the famed successor to Pro Prosecutor Von Karma? I'm Francisca Von Karma, the prodigy. Why does she sound like a queen? <laughs> I see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. Oh, there's the whip. Revenge. Is this about her father, Manfred Von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can- Ow! <laughs> I think she had the whip. I don't think she's gonna use it. And on the judge, I'm talking. <laughs> Poor judge. I miss my wacky cart with Edgeworth. Judge, don't say his name. I just had this talk with my. I don't care. This, this is not the kind of wacky I want in my court. If you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. Please speak with your mouth like a normal person. I beg of you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew she had a whip. I didn't expect her to actually use it on people. <laughs> I just have to deal with it. This is so funny. This is insane. Make no mistake. I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecutor Von Karma, your opening statement, please. And a bandage. I'm bleeding. Those of Von Karma blood all have only one fate. And that is perfection. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. Very well. Jeez. What is the defense's position? Your Honor. Does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. What does that mean? Ten minutes. I give the defense ten minutes before it changes its plea. Oh god, you are like my karma. That's what he did. That's right. I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Justified self-defense? A plea usually reserved for when a person unintentionally kills in defense of themselves. You could very easily make a solid case that it, it was self-defense, but... The defense stands by the plea of not guilty, your honor. Any me needed it. Because to plead justified self-defense is to say you did kill someone. <laughs> nice bow. Not quite Edgeworth bow, but I like it. How foolish. If that is how you want to play it with Mr. Phoenix Wright, then I shall now call the first witness. She's just as scary as her father. My father like daughter, I suppose. Hey, Gumshoe! You're the wit first witness again. Witness, your name and occupation. Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective at the local precinct. Good job. They actually said their name and profession. Ah! <laughs> Why did you whip him? Get to the point already. Explain to the court the details of this murder. Yes, sir. Um, ow. If everyone would please look at this map. The channeling chamber has no windows and the door was locked shut. At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? Something fun? Um, they, well, they were channeling a spirit, sir. Ch channeling a spirit? How terrifying. I'm afraid of ghosts. That's quite the look of disbelief there, Your Honor. Ahem. Anyway, a few minutes after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. Ah, and that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? 
Mm -mm, mm -mm. I believe this is one of the most open and shut cases I have ever presided over. However, Phoenix Wright is here, so that probably means the opposite. A diagram of the channeling chamber. So, how was the victim killed? I was about to get to that. Stop wasting my time then. Cause of death. The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. The shot was fired from point blank range. Before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause an in instantaneous death. The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Hmm. So the victim was stabbed before being shot. This is the victim's autopsy report, sir. After being stabbed in the chest, he was shot in the forehead at point blank. Hmm. Are we sure that's what killed him then? The court accepts it into evidence. Mr. Wright, you may now question the witness. Okay, um... The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead. I'm impressed on this. I just feel weird that the stabbing maybe he wasn't? I don't know. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshoe. Whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. The victim? Now why would he have Oh, you got the you have a female objection. You haven't had that before. Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? The point that you are missing is whose fingerprints are on that pistol. If you're not already paying attention to that, then I suggest you start. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Along with the victims, the defendant, Maya Faze, were also on the trip, sir. Well, that's unfortunate. Someone planted it. Or they used her hand to do it. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were left on the murder weapon. Ugh, I walked right into her hands there. Okay, hmm. The shot was fired from point blank range. Ugh. Oh man, you wish to press on everything? Point blank, huh? So, about how far away is that? It's anywhere between 12 to 20 inches away. And how do you know he was shot at point blank? Tisk tisk tisk, Mr. Phoenix, right? I grow tired of the foolish foolery of the foolish fools of this foolish country. That's a lot of fools. I like her sprites. She's got cool ones. Uh, excuse me? Gunpowder burn. Gunpowder burn. When something is shot from a point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Gunpowder exploding is what makes a bullet fire. And that gets, a re gets real hot, pal. And there were definitely some gunpowder burns left on the victim's forehead. Wow. Never knew that. Live and learn, I guess. Before the victim was shot, he was stabbed in the chest. Okay. Stabbed. And what was he stabbed with? A fruit knife. I see. I love fruit. And whose knife was it? Looks like it belongs to the face, sir. And of course, Maya Faye's fingerprints are all over it. Mmm, all over it, huh? Well, wouldn't that be kind of weird if they were all over it? <laughs> Depends on where all over it means. Like, maybe they're just... Maybe Eeny Meeny just, like, rubbing her hand all over it. Ugh, this does not look good. Ha ha ha! What will you do now, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I don't know. I don't know, Von Karma. I really don't. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. What else do we have? The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Ugh. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yep. Sure as sure can be. One look at the wounds, and you'd come to the same conclusion too, pal. A fool is a fool who will only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. How many times are you going to say that? 
How do you even have that memorized? There's so many fools in that sentence. A pistol shot to the forehead at point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter, then, which was first? Think a little more before you open that big mouth of yours, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Please don't whip me. Ugh, what a pain. That's enough. You have clearly established how the victim was murdered. I brought the two murder weapons with me today. Mm-hmm. Very well. Good job, Gumshoe. I'm proud of you. Have a lollipop. The court accepts them into evidence. Okay, murder weapon was Gray's. Two shots fired. Bears Maya and Gray's fingerprints. Murder weapon, a small fruit knife, belongs to the phase. Bears Maya's fingerprints. Uh, okay. The date and time of death was June 19th at 3.15 p.m. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard two gunshots at this time. And two murder weapons, both with the defendant's fingerprints on them, huh? Hmm, this does seem like an open and shut case, but yet again, Phoenix Wright is here, which makes me nervous. Naturally. This is going from bad to worse. As if the summary just now wasn't op oversimplifying things to the extreme. Your Honor, feel free to slam your little gavel- that little gavel of yours. After all, there is no room left for doubt, is there? Mm-hmm. She's right, and I don't want to be whipped again. That is quite true, Mr. Wright. Yes. Even in the face of all this, do you still wish to plead not guilty? It's the opinion of the court that if you do not adjust your plea, you stand to lose. An opinion's just an opinion. See, just as I promised, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You would change your plea in less than ten minutes. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Will you change to justify self-defense? Because now would be the time to do that. This is your final chance. Five, four, three, two. This is a huge decision. I better think this way, this through all the way. Uh, no, I'm gonna keep pleading not guilty. Screw you, Francisca. If we plead justified self-defense, we would basically be confess confessing to murder. After the trial, Maya's life would be ruined and she'd be labeled a murderer. I can't let that happen. Your Honor. Have you reached a conclusion, Mr. Wright? I'm very excited to hear it. The defense will not change its plea. We will not, we will accept nothing short of complete acquittal. I got whipped again, didn't I? You, you have sealed your fate, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Detective. Y yes, sir. Present the final portion of your testimony. The final strike. Um, yes, sir. Now, see here, proceedings are run by... Eek! <laughs> I don't like when she does that. I miss Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, um, yes, of course. Go ahead, detective, and give your testimony. Is this not illegal? Is there nothing I can be doing about this? I'm being whipped in my own court, and for some reason I'm just accepting it. I think the court would like to hear about the other piece of incriminating evidence. Incriminating evidence. Sorry, pal, but there's an even more incriminating piece of evidence. This is the costume the defendant was wearing at the time of the crime. As you can see, it's covered in blood. Are we sure it's blood? Judge, you remember last time. In the last game, what did you say? It could be ketchup. It could be fake blood. It could be mayonnaise. No, no, Judge. That was a black and white photo that time, so it could be anything. It could, it could be ketchup right now. It could be paint. The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. So this is the costume. I love cosplay. There certainly is evidence of back spray of blood on this. This piece directly links my fate of the crime, sir. I see. The court accepts this into evidence. Clothes Maya was wearing at the time of the murder. There are blood splatters on it. All right, Mr. Wright. Maya's fingerprints on both murder weapons and blood splatters on her clothes. Could this situation get any worse? Ha, <sighs> what's wrong? You seem to be at a loss. I think this is the last piece of testimony the prosecution should have to offer. Feel free to sulk off with your tail between your legs, Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
Please stop calling me by my full name. It's disturbing. Okay. Um. As you can see, it's covered in blood. We don't know that. This blood on the costume. Or maybe it's like the spray isn't right. Lab results show that it's the victim's blood. Hmm. So there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. So were there any other clues you could gleam from this piece of evidence? Um, well... Her objection is so, like, cutesy compared to how she actually is. If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But too bad, not enough time. Let's move on. There's no time limit. We can take as much time as we want. Okay, we make the judge late for Mahjong every day. You don't have to abide by that. Ah yes, Ms. Von Karma is perfectly correct. I will be late for Mahjong if we take too long. Ugh, not even the judge is on her side. But if I bite off more than I can chew here, what should I do? Um, I press further. That's always the option. Why is Ms. Moncarma suddenly putting up resistance? There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. It was very random to say that like, we were changing the subject. There must be something about this costume. I just have to look harder. Mr. Wright, Ms. Von Karma's logic is perfect. There is no way to, for you to poke a hole in it. Ugh, it's like my time is up. So about the costume. No, there is one little thing. It's gotta be like the spray doesn't match up, right? Or, hmm. Let me look at it. Can I, I don't think I can look at it. There was like a hole in it. Was that the bullet hole, maybe? I just assumed it was like, you know how some clothes have like a thumb hole? I thought it was that, but I'm like, wait, could that have been the bullet hole that went through it? Meaning, it was somehow someone else did it. There's, there's one little thing. Your honor, actually there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. What? What are you talking about, pal? Where is this problem you're talking about? There better actually be one, or we're gonna get whipped. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Yeah, it's only one side. That's gotta be what it is. It's, uh... Eh, am I... Okay, am I in the right spot? I think so. Eh. I asked the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve? There's a tiny hole here. It is where you put your thumbs. No, Your Honor. A, a hole? But that wasn't in the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It, it smells faintly of gunpowder. Gunpowder? No one ever told me. A hole that smells of gunpowder. Looks like I found the hole I was looking for. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that it must be a bullet hole. Awfully quiet, aren't we, Bar Car aren't we Von Karma? <laughs> order, order, order! This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. Press the check button for details. Okay. Eh, 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 over. Check. Oh, I can just see it. Sorry about that. I guess we messed up, sir. Is she actually smiling? Oh god, she's got something up her sleeve for this, doesn't she? What else is she hiding? Hold yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony. That just now was a fluke. Nothing more. Objection. How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. While I agree it is a mistake on the part of the police, mm -mm, what Prosecutor Von Karma has said is true. The evidence still stands. No, it doesn't. 
That's weird. We have to consider how that happened. If you do not find a more definitive problem with the evidence, then she's going to whip you. I don't even have to threaten to kill anyone with my laser vision anymore, because I can just threaten the whip. No way. Detective Gumshoe, please continue with your testimony. Y yes, sir. How was this not enough? The defendant attacked and killed a person without a doubt. Who without a doubt was not fighting back. How do we know that? He wasn't fighting back? How do you know if he was or wasn't? We could find no evidence that the victim put up any sort of struggle, pal. Hmm. So did the murderer have a fight with the victim or not? Depending on this, the circumstances around this murder changed drastically. Ugh, we're in a real- we're in real trouble now. I wish I had something to prove the victim did fight back. Hmm. Not upon karma. She thinks she can decide the verdict with the, this testimony alone. Unless... Huh. Unless the bullet hole w wasn't from the real murderer, it was... Because it was his gun. Maybe he shot at Maya and missed. That's gotta be it, right? Well, I'll find a critical contradiction somehow. And then I'll have her. I'm gonna be presenting it on that. Defendant, okay. Present the costume. But I hit the wrong button. Objection! There. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes, that is my name. <laughs> Having you call me by my full name is kind of a weird feeling. Now you know how I feel. You said that my client killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Yeah, I did. Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole you police overlooked supposed to mean? Uh, um, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the victim had fired off a shot. Is this what it means to not fight back? Uh, ah, you're right. It seems you are correct, Phoenix Wright. We will finally have a winning statement. I love you again. If the victim had tried to shoot the defendants, then it would change everything. All right. The wind seems to be shifting. Ha. Huh. What is with that are you finished yet laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Hey, <laughs> I knew that's what that laugh meant. Ms. Von Karma. It seems that Maya Faye was shot at by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. But I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. They rejected justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Ugh. Now that you... Why, that's right! Ow. Which means the defense has yet to prove anything at all. Great. No! Well, yes, that's true. So a little awkward, Phoenix, after I professed my love to you and means nothing. You didn't even actually prove anything. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substan substantiate even a plea of justified felt ju justified self-defense. <laughs> Words. Huh? How so? Ah! Don't just stand there. Why are you whipping me? Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the new information we acquired, added in, of course. Huh? You mean, by myself? You want me to put together a scenario all by myself? Ah! I will whip you again. Of course that's what I mean. Y yes, sir. Right away, sir. What transpired? During the channeling, the defendant saw her chance to stab the victim in the chest. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, sir. While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. Um... 
Now, how does that make any sense if we were saying that, like, oh, Maya killed him at point blank range, like, it was so close, you know? The defendant then picked up on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. It doesn't make sense. It's like contradicting yourself. Hmm, the scenario you have put together does make sense. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Wright, you are the contradiction man. On the surface, it does seem to make sense. However, I won't give up that easily. Please refrain from glaring at me like that. It's scary. I never knew you could glare like that. Phoenix Wright, and all the time I knew you. Now then, your cross-examination, please. Okay. We're gonna press... without being too close, because that just doesn't... make any sense. So you're saying that the bullet hole is in his costume was made then? Sorry, pal, but yeah, that's what I think. The two of them were already fighting when a shot was fired. Maya, I'm really glad you weren't hurt. Just glaring at me. Look, maybe I needed to present on that instead. Did I present the costume again? No, I, I pressed again. <laughs> Wrong button. She's gonna glare at me again. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Okay, back. We're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Missing the tiny hole on this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Uh, what do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. E explain yourself, Mr. Wright. I'm confused again. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point blank. If that were true, then where is the gunpowder burn on this costume? I love, once again, I picked the right thing for the wrong reasons. I was like, well, it doesn't make any sense because you said when they were at close range before, uh, you, she was able to shoot him, but... It, it should be the same the other way around. He's like, no, there's no gunpowder. <laughs> eh. Gunpowder burn. This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Okay, so maybe it is what I originally thought. Some, Someone from behind the folding... Uh, like, thing. <laughs> the folding, you know what I'm talking about. Shot there, and it actually went through her sleeve and then hit him. Maybe. Oh! There's not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. Maybe they just did it... ...later to, like... I don't know. This is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? I don't get it. Me either, Judge. I thought I did. But clearly I don't. It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. Mm. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain away anything. Or er, explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away. And it was then, when they were separated, that he fired. How was that? As if that was even possible. According to the testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had enough strength to push the defendant very far after that. Oh, gotcha. Finally broke your exterior. W well then, that's right. The defendant must have pushed the victim away. After stabbing him, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. And then while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There. That should satisfy even you. Hmm, that does make an awful lot of sense, but will it satisfy Phoenix Wright? I don't think so. You haven't been in this wacky court very long if you think that. Well, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I must be careful. I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. No, something doesn't make sense. 
There's a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. I knew it. Fatal. Flaw. I. Why did you whip me? I didn't even do anything. Very interesting. I would love to see where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snag in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. And when she was about to strike, the doctor took his shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. Maybe, maybe it is the folding screen because it has a bullet hole in it. I'll try it. This is the piece of evidence that destroys her logic. What is that? A folding screen? I would like to point the court's attention to the hole in the folding screen. Ah! It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Come to you and I aren't as smart as you. Are these two really that clueless? Yes, you know this. The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. Okay, so it was actually the reverse of what I thought. It passed through a, at a height of approximately eight inches of the ground, which means... When the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Hmm. Yeah, so, okay, so it's actually the reverse of what I thought. I thought that the bullet came from behind the folding screen. Unless the doctor maybe saw someone behind there was shooting at that someone. Order, order. This changes everything. Let's look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot. And the bullet was, and the bullet hit this folding screen. It hit this location about eight inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. Um. Well, it's. Hmm. Well, it's hard to say the exact location. Would you like here? In front of it? She was standing here, near the folding screen. I guess that was good enough. Wait, wait a second. We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole, but. How could you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible that the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? The gunpowder stuff, though. That's impossible. But why? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question, Ms. Von Karma. If she were shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. Exactly! We've been over this! However... There is none of the sort around the bullet hole for this costume. Ah! C curse you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You... Hmm. I believe it has now been proven that... Mm-hmm. The defendant was standing away away from the victim when she was shot at. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? Yes, it changes everything. Naturally. Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at the time? Squatting all the way by the folding, folding screen? Exactly. If Maya Faye was the real murderer, why would she be by, her, by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? <laughs> Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job, Gumshoe. Are you kidding me? Oh, guess you're right, pal. All right, with this, the rest of the trial should be in the bu- Oh God, what have you got up your sleeve now? Blast radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Mm, you amuse me. Ugh, of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be the smarmy smile? 
Detective, how dare you damage my perfect logic? Uh, huh? How is it all my fault? You can start repairing your standing by first removing that three-strand goatee. Oh, and rest assured, your punishment will come later. P punishment? Are you going to take money out of my paycheck like Edgeworth did, or are you going to whip me? Both are bad. Well then, Your Honor, I think I've had all I can of this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness? That's got to be Lotta. Oh god, I forgot about her. Very well. The court will take a five-minute recess. I need my swings break. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness. I forgot Lotta was going to be a witness, too. I wonder... When's Eeny Meeny coming in? Actually, I forgot. We're going to have to go back and investigate again after um, the second half of the trial, so yeah, she probably won't come until later. All right, hold that thought, Maya. We're going to be ending today's video here. I am a little confused because <laughs> this is not going exactly how I thought. Because the, the, the shooting happened in the reverse that I thought it was. Like, I thought Eeny Meeny was behind the folding thing and shot from behind, like, threw it at him. But it was at point-blank range, and he shot that way. Did he see her behind there and was trying to kill her? I feel like she had to have been, like, she faked being asleep, like, put, like, pillows under there or something, and then snuck into the channeling chamber and hid back there. It was in there the whole time. And why was Maya, like... Cower was she like cowering over by the folding thing or something because of what was going on? Were the two fighting and like the bullet just happened to go that way and she was like over there? I don't know. Well, it would also have been her as the nurse too. I don't know. We do have a good bit left to go yet with the second half of this trial and more investigating and then more trial. So it's going to take a bit to figure out yet. It's like, I, I feel like it's got to be eeny meeny, but trying to figure out the pieces to get there is challenging. And I am still curious, like what was... Mia hiding with those locks. Um, overall, Francisca von Karma. Um, I, I'm actually okay with her. <laughs> like, I immediately hated her dad. Like, von Karma, oh, I did not like him, but she's entertaining. <laughs> the way she just whipped the judge for no reason. She kept whipping people for no reason, and they just, like, have to deal with it. Like, she just doesn't get in trouble for it at all. Uh, it's funny. Um, I like her vibe, her aura. Like, she's gonna be annoying to, like, deal with because... Like, she is very Von Karma-esque, where she's like, you're going to do this in 10 minutes. And just the way she d does things with evidence and everything, like, oh yeah, you can tell they're related all right, but she's just got a better vibe to her. And I like her sprites in different poses. She's very cool. So I think I'm going to end up liking her a lot more than Von Karma. However, she's still not Edgeworth. What ha what happened to him? I I'm still like, I forgot about that in the beginning. We saw that stuff with him and it's like, oh, did... Like, is Phoenix talking about, like, he just left the profession? Like, I know he, we saw him leave. Like, he left that letter for Bellboy at the end of the last game. But is he also missing? Because that's concerning. Like, why? Like, I can see Phoenix being upset if, like, he left the profession altogether, but not being like, oh, don't t say his name. So I feel like, is he missing or something? I don't know. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and end today's video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!